Hello, everybody, and welcome to our next class. We have just run a ChIP-seq pipeline and got a bunch of analyses already from that pipeline. And now it's time to analyze the data, but first we're going to have to learn some R skills um, that we'll use to analyze all of that uh, data. So uh, the next few classes are going to be teaching you the basics of R <coughs> using R Studio and um, analyses uh, that will provide the fundamentals of what are what is a chip peak file, what's in there, how do I find overlaps, things like that. And then we'll move into more specific analyses um, on your data set. All right, so um, we are uh, here in our class GitHub and we just finished 03 Nextflow and are on four R basics. And the first one to do is our studio install packages um, uh, here. So we are going to move from this kind of terminal world to our studio where I've kind of been the whole time. But um, now we're going to get everybody on the same page and we'll be working from um, our studio from now on. It's just a great uh, interface to do our code that has a bunch of um, bells and whistles. And we'll go over the fundamentals um, today and uh, start installing packages. So we'll be ready to start learning um, our code towards our goal of analyzing uh, the chip peak files we just created. Okay, so this I am gonna move as usual into uh, the class um, R Studio. So you can get R Studio at home for free and download it and um, uh, open it up and navigate to wherever you have been uh, ran your um, NF core chip seek pipeline. And um, uh, this is the markdown file that was in GitHub. And so this pane right here tends to be where your code is or things you're going to run um, like we are today. Um, and uh, is sort of your guidebook of running code where you can actually run it um, in real time. So things like this, um, and it will actually be uh, functional. Um, okay, so this is the code pane. Um, and one quick thing to show you right now is as I loaded that, all this started populating in my thing that can be kind of annoying. Um, so this button here, has a uh, chunk output to council uh, button. Um, and then this way, when I run, if I run that, it'll come out over here. And we'll talk about that pane in just a second. Um, below this sort of code, we can actually run base R here um, and you know run R code directly. Now you can also run it on the terminal, just calling up R as a language like we did Nextflow or Git or Bash. Um, once it's installed, you can just call it up and uh, have this sort of forward arrow prompt here um, to, to know that. So um, that's cool. Then you'll often want to just run stuff down here that instead of typing it again up here. Um, and that is the console. Um, there's also a terminal in here. So you can um, have a terminal and see where you are and do bash code. So you don't have to change over to your terminal. Um, I tend to still do that, but it is nice to have that here. Um, and this is jobs where we can run local jobs that take a long time. Um, we're not going to get to that for a while. Um, and over here is sort of your navigation folder, useful tools. Um, so it's showing me where I am right now. And this is where you want to be if you're in class. Um, if you're at home, you want to be wherever you cloned this uh, class 2023 repository and uh, in the folder uh, where your next flow is. But this is the folder, the top folder that when you clone the class GitHub repository to your GitHub site, um, that you made a folder called class 2023. So that's where you want to go to for today. Um, and we will uh, start an R project in there. Um, in just a second. So then now all of your stuff will be here. You can even do GitHub um, here. Um, there, but a, just a few more things. So it's really nice. You can navigate um, uh, around the uh, files much easier and have an interface to do that. You can rename files. You can upload files here, create a new folder, um, some basic things. 
And in this more button, um, there's something that's really important. Um, what I'm going to do here is set as working directory. Um, and so this sets where I am. This is important when you're running code because it wants to know where you want to be when you output stuff from that code. And we're going to get to that in the next class. Um, so right now I just set it to there. And if I want to know where I am right now, I can do get working directory. Um, there we go, get working directory, and I can see where I am. Um, so that's important. Always keep track of where you are, set your working directory to where you want to be. I'm setting it up here at the top for today. Um, and uh, you'll see why in a second with the R project. Um, also in there, you can open a new terminal in the same path that you just set as your working directory. So you don't have to like type in and out. And so now when you open the terminal over here, it'll be in the same directory. Um, I don't recommend moving things if they're Git tracked because that can cause a bunch of problems. I would do that on the terminal if you're gonna rename your files, um, but there is a way to do that here. And so this is just a um, thing if you want to go to a specific file path um, that you want to type it out and it's easier, you can just do that here with this little triple button um, guy here. Okay, and so now moving to this upper pane here um, has a bunch of things. This is our environment. So this is what all the code we run, whatever it produces, they're going to be objects, let's say like an Excel file or a data frame or something like that. And so um, the, they will show up in our environment and we'll see that in the next class. This is just to give you an overview of the actual R Studio. Um, okay, and to clean your environment, you can hit this broom here and it'll erase all the values. I recommend doing that often. Um, if you have stuff left in there, things may run because it was left over and things may not run because um, it was left over. Um, so, that's that, and they have our Git here. Um, as soon as we're set up, uh, if I do this and make a change and save it, um, Git's gonna say, hey, let's do the commit um, and push, and we can do that right from here, is the push arrow. Um, this arrow is to pull from a repository, um, and it'll also tell you what branch you're on, um, and that's where we wanna be here. Um, yours won't have this yet, I don't believe. Um, it may, um, but these arrows might not be lit up, or it might be. We'll, we'll see. Um, but it uh, will be soon once we make a new project. So let's make a new project here. Um, I don't want to do that because I already have uh, my project set up. <laughs> so um, what you're going to do is create a new project and then um, you're gonna get from um, an existing directory and you're gonna navigate to this class 2023 folder um, that you're working in. So for me, I'm in my um, JR folder inside of our class. So this is where I'd wanna be here. And you can see there's an R project um, there. So. Um, this is just the way our server is set up. So basically, this is the class 2023 folder you want to start your R project in. Um, and again, that's just this shield right here. Um, click on that and say new project and from existing directory. And this is all laid out in here as well. Um, if you want to uh, read about it instead, um, it's all right here. Okay, so now we need to install some packages. Um, there's two ways to do that. There's just tons of useful packages out there written in R, and that's one of the reasons why I, I use R. Um, Python has its own uh, universe of um, pre-made packages, functions, things you'd want. Um, and so uh, the number one most important thing I think to use when you're using R is tidyverse. So that will be the first one. Um, we will install and uh, go ahead and run this. Um, again, make sure you're you're here, and I'm going to set that as my working directory now. Um, and uh, to if you um, want to uh, copy any new changes from um, our GitHub, if it's changed during the class, you can just go to the GitHub, copy and paste this in here. 
and work from here. So a little more on our studio in uh, starting a project and you should have this our project here and then now you'll have it up here as well. Okay, so um, yeah, installing packages, install.packages, this function right here is default in R. So like it's already gonna be loaded um, for you and um, you can go ahead and run this and install it. It might take a, a few minutes. Um, some take longer and some take shorter. So um, we're gonna spend most of the time in this class uh, installing um, packages that we're gonna need uh, moving forward. Okay, so um, the other, so uh, install.packages is gonna go to the CRAN archive. So the archive of our um, packages and there's also a bioconductor you might've heard of and it needs a, a separate installer. Um, so if it's, you always have to ask when you find a function, you Google something like, how do I make a heat map? And there'll be a package. And then you go to that site and you wanna install it. Um, it's either gonna be hosted in CRAN or in Bioconductor for the most part. Um, in CRAN, you'll use install.packages and then the name of the package. Um, and then for Bioconductor, you're gonna first have to install the Bioc manager, the Bioconductor manager. Um, that code is right here. Go ahead and just run it. Um, you can get it from their website as well if you wanna read more about it. Um, and uh, you'll see, uh, basically you can just think of those as two big warehouses of very useful um, functions, like how to make a heat map, how to overlap peaks, many kinds of things, including tidyverse, which is a way of writing in R that um, makes things a little easier to read and you'll, you'll see that as we go along. Okay. So once you have the Bioc Manager installed, you're good uh, until the next version you want. And that's here. And you can look on their website and see which version you prefer to have with your R setup. Um, and then there's uh, to, to run that the same way we did install.packages. You do Bioc Manager colon colon install and then the name of the package, uh, quite similar to what we did for Tidyverse. So go ahead and install those. You might want to pause the video. It's going to uh, take a little bit. Um, and uh, what we're going to look at now is this R startup. So in all the pages, you're going to see a title, author, output type. Um, you can knit this into a really nice HTML document that will have code, figures, and text that you write. And that's what we're going to do as we move towards the end of the class in one big document. I showed it in the... Um, uh, intro video, and um, I believe I still have it here. Um, basically, this is what we're going to see. The end of class is all the code. Uh, this is like links to where the data is, code, what type of figure it makes. Um, this is the entire class and its wholeness uh, across a huge data set. And it's just a really nice thing uh, to call knitting or uh, writing this out so that the code and the figures that were resulted from the code and then writing out results makes it a really nice way to um, share results with people and have it sort of open source. And that's here with this knitter options, echo equals true. So in this case, we wanna include everything in the document as it's printing out as R is running. Um, and we'll get into these and I have it that down below of what uh, why this is important. Um, these are the libraries for your session. So if we know um, we're going to use tidyverse and genomic ranges, which we're just doing an intro to our studio at this point. So um, we're not going to use them until the next class. Um, and um, yeah, so and you installed those. There's just some more description on why to have that in your setup. So basically, you have a title frame and then a setup on all RMDs. And you'll see that as we go along that all of them have that same thing. And so these are the, the packages we're going to need uh, moving forward in class. Um, and the exercise here is to get used to finding out where they are. So you have to Google where the, uh, the name of the um, uh, package and then uh, use the install.packages or Bioc Manager, respectively. OK, so that's our overview of our studio. And we will keep using it and keep revealing new features of it. But this should get us started knowing where we are, setting our working directory, and how to um, import the RMD file for the day's class. For example, we just finished 01, 
now we're going to go to O2, our basics uh, for the next video. All right. Thank you very much and be well.